This is Lemmy with Revzilla, here to talk to you today about how to plug a tubeless tire on the side of the road. Now, if you're gonna repair a tire on the side of the road, a couple things should probably come to light pretty quickly. The first is that you need to have a tubeless tire and you're gonna need to have some sort of tire repair kit with you. If you don't have tools, you can't actually repair your tire. Another thing you wanna think about too before you start repairing a tire is keeping yourself safe. Either pull the bike over to the shoulder like you can see I've done here on this fairly quiet road, or if you're on a busier road like a freeway, you might wanna think about seeing if you can limp the bike to an exit ramp. Either way, make sure that you don't put yourself in harm's way. Now, there's some other things you need to know about the actual tire repair itself. Firstly, plugging a tire, not a permanent method of repair. This is simply a temporary solution to get you home, to keep you from loading your bike onto a truck. Another thing you need to know too is not every single thing is necessarily repairable. Big cuts or slices, punctures bigger than a quarter of an inch, you can't fix this stuff. It's not gonna happen on the side of the road. Another thing you wanna do is lay your thumbs on the outside of the tread of your tire. Everything between your thumbs, fair game for a repair. Everything covered by your thumbs or to the outside of them up into and including the sidewall of the tire, probably not gonna take a repair. If you have a puncture in one of those spots, load it onto a truck, it's your only option. Now, let's get started with this actual repair right here. The first thing you're gonna to need to do is identify the foreign object that either is still in the tire or was in the tire. Now, for the most part, if you still think you have some air in the tire, you're probably gonna see a foreign object in the tire. However, it is possible it may have fallen out. You may be looking for a much smaller puncture, which can be sometimes hard to spot. And again, one of the things that can kind of help here, believe it or not, is a little bit of spit. If you see a hole and you suspect that it could be leaking some air, throw a little spit around it, and the rushing air should actually blow some bubbles in the spit, and you should be able to identify whether or not you've got a leak somewhere. Now, looking at this thing, obviously, we actually don't have a flat. I just rode this thing over here. So, we're gonna make a flat. Of course, I'm gonna put it in a repairable area so I can show you how to repair one of these. We're gonna gun one of these things in right here. I'm gonna put a drywall screw there. Now this street glide has a repairable puncture. Now, when you're at this stage and you've actually found the offending item in the tire, you may be very tempted to pull it out. Don't do it yet. Don't touch it! Instead, at this point, leave the offending item in the tire and start to lay out your tools so you can begin your repair. So right here, we have our string plugs themselves, made of a heavy string, rubberized coated. These are actually what's gonna hold the air inside of the tire. Now we have sort of our magic items here, our tire repair tools. First, we have our reaming tool. Note this is heavily knurled down the shaft of the tool. Now we're gonna thrust this inside the tire a couple times, and these knurls are gonna help kind of knock the burrs off of the steel cords that run through the tire. And we're doing that so that those steel cords don't tear up our rubber string plug as we insert it. Now the other tool, probably the key to the whole operation here, is actually the plug insertion tool. We're gonna work a plug through this thing, and if you'll notice at the end of the tool, there's actually a slit cut into this. That slit is actually what allows this tool to deposit the plug inside of the hole made by this screw. This is sort of the key to the whole operation. Now these string plugs are pretty, pretty gooey. They're, they're sticky, as you can see, as I'm pulling them away here. So I'm gonna load this into my tool, but once you do that, you wanna set this somewhere kind of clean. I find when I'm inserting these two, just a little bit of lubricant can help. A little spit works just fine. It'll help you work the plug into the tool. And you're gonna get it halfway through. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about in just a second here. Once you got it in there, you can kind of pull to that halfway point that I was just talking about. Right about like yay, set it aside somewhere clean. Now before we get into this too deep, I wanna show you too something to think about if you're looking at a tire plug kit. Note that these are T-handled tools. These are helpful because they allow you to throw a lot of leverage into this. As you're gonna see in just a moment, this is a sort of physical job, especially when you're reaming the tire and inserting the plug. Now one of the tools with a straight handle on it doesn't give you quite the leverage you'll have with one of these. However, they do pack down much smaller. Something to think about if you are actually shopping. And the final thing I'm also about to get ready here too is a razor blade. We're gonna have this out and ready to rock and roll so we can trim off the plug after it's installed. I'll show you a little bit more about that. As far as right now is concerned, however, though, it's time to pull this thing out. And for that, I'm gonna use one more tool that doesn't come in most tire plug kits, but I'm gonna recommend it to all of you. Simple pliers. They don't come in most tire repair kits, and that's really unfortunate because once you've got something inside your tire, it can be almost impossible to get it out without a set of pliers. If I just have my fingers, I probably can't pull this thing out of here. You're gonna find that's true of most things that embed themselves inside of a tire. If your tire repair kit or your tool roll doesn't have a set of pliers, you might think heavily about putting them in there. All right, working quickly, we're gonna get this thing out of here. Now I'm gonna ream this hole. Again, quickly to keep air from sliding in and out of here, so. We're gonna use this and let these knurls, again, kind of cut in there and make sure that all the fabric or steel, depending on what kind of tire you're working on, 
is nice and smooth. Now this thing's ready to accept the plug. So I'm gonna get my tool ready here. I'm gonna swap these very quickly. And we're gonna work this plug in and we're gonna go about half of the way in. All right, now we're about where we need to be. Remember that slit we had in there? That's gonna allow this tool to back out and theoretically leave the plug right in place. Just like that. Better rock and roll. Now let's get some air into this thing. All righty, we're in the home stretch here. Now, some of you may have just seen that and said, well, Lem, I don't have electrical capacity on my bike. I don't have a cigarette lighter. I don't have that big old barge you got there. That's okay. To be honest with you, I don't carry an electric pump in my personal tire kit either. Instead, I use these puppies. CO2 cartridges. Now, of course, you'll need a special inflator head in order to use these, but these can be a great option for those of you who don't have robust electrical systems or are short on packing space. Again, choppers, dirt bikes, folks who are kind of short on room might want to consider CO2 inflators. For whatever it's worth, I carry about half a dozen of those CO2 cartridges with me. It's been my experience that your typical 130-90-16 tire takes about three of those to get it filled to the point where you can get it down the road, maybe hit a service station to remove that CO2 and put in some air instead. So we're almost home free on this thing. All we have to do now is again take our razor blade and we want to trim this thing down. And the reason we're going to trim this kind of flush with the tread is simply so that the roadway itself can't grab this nice gummy plug and pull it out. Just about through. Get rid of that puppy. Now if you want you can do sort of one last little thing here. Let's use a little spit. Check your work. I don't see any air bubbles here. I think we're pretty much set to fly. So I'm gonna button up my tools. Again, make sure that that item you pulled out of the tire isn't in your tire's path and you're ready to rock and roll. So you've seen exactly how simple it is to plug a tire. It's really not difficult at all. Any motorcyclist should be able to tackle this task. Now, if you're worried you won't remember exactly how to do this on the side of the road, swing over the common tread, print out my article on this, tuck it inside your tire repair kit, just so you don't forget and you have some destructions on the side of the road should you need them. And if you don't have a tire repair kit, well, I'm gonna invite you to swing by my favorite retailer and pick one up. Head on over to RevZilla.com, check out some of the tire repair kits we have. Be a responsible motorcyclist. Grab a tire repair kit right now. I guarantee it'll be cheaper than the tow truck you never have to call. Thanks for watching. I'm Lem, I'm out of here.